this is not what I expected. This is not what I wanted. This is not it. What's up guys, it's Brooke. And today I'm using this baby right here for the first time ever, the Jeffree Star Cremated Palette. I was so excited to dive into this palette today. I created this look right here. I also did some swatches for you guys. So if you want to see my thoughts on the palette and the tutorial, make sure you keep on watching. I also will be doing a giveaway. So stay tuned to the very end of the video to make sure you know how to enter for your chance to win one of the cremated palettes. But before we get into the rest of the video, I just want to say if you're new here, hello, welcome to my channel. I'm Brooke. I know there has to be many new bitches out there because this is a giveaway video so thank you for stopping by make sure you hit that subscribe button and join my youtube family i release two videos a week mainly about makeup but also just whatever i want to post so if that's something that interests you please hit that subscribe button if it's not get your negative energy out of here i don't care now with that being said and out of the way please make sure you give this video a big thumbs up and let's get right on into the swatches Oh wow, this is such a creamy shadow. I could tell just from one touch that was crazy. So this is the first row. We have Hearse, Angel of Death, Grave Digger, Death Certificate, RIP, and Paul Bearer. These colors are so creamy, it's insane. So the first one we have is Inheritance. Then we have Wednesday, Mortuary Beautician. I think that's how you say it. That one is beautiful. Last Look, Solemnly Swear, and The Morgue. So next we have Mausoleum, Embalmed. That one is super light. I don't even know if it'll show up. We have Eulogy, we have Life Insurance, again, almost impossible to see that one. We have Last Respects, and then we have Goodbye. We have Obituary, Burial Gown, Afterlife, we have Casket Ready, which is Death Blow. And then we have Diamond Ashes for the last one. So those are all the swatches in the palette and I'm going to go ahead and how off camera and prime my eyelid and then I will be back to do a little look with the palette to see how these shadows actually perform since we all know swatches don't do shit. Okay, so I've zoomed you guys on in as much as I possibly can and I'll try and lean forward a little bit so you can see how the shadows perform on the eye really, really well. But I think I already kind of know what look I'm leaning towards. A lot of people are gonna be doing smoky eyes with this palette or something really crazy dramatic because that's what a lot of Jeffree Star's PR does. But I wanna play around and see if I can do a nice smoky halo eye. I've been really into the halo eyes recently and I haven't really seen a lot of people utilize this palette for for a halo eye so that's what I want to do today so let's see to start I'm going to take this shade right here which is called and um, embalmed and I'm going to go ahead and put that in my crease but really focus it on the outer and inner corners because this will be what my transition shade is so right off the bat the color is pigmented but it's very light as you could just see. Okay, it's definitely buildable, but I feel as if though when I blend it out, it might disappear entirely because this shade is very light and pretty ashy, honestly. I don't even know if you can really see it on camera. I'm looking in my viewfinder and it looks like it's pretty hard to see. Okay, I just adjusted my lighting, so hopefully you should be able to see a little bit better. I think I was overexposed before, sorry. But this is how the first shade has laid down. It looks pretty nice, but it does kind of blend away if you blend too much. So I feel like that might be consistent for the other lighter shades in this palette. 
but it's not patchy by any means and the color payoff is there. I'm just afraid that if I try and blend away any harsh lines right now, that it's just kind of going to disappear into my skin. So let's see if that happens. I'm just going to take a fluffy brush to try and disperse the edges. And yeah, just as I suspected, it kind of just blends away. Mm. I don't know, I'm gonna pick up a different shade. So I'm gonna pick up the shade that's right next to it. This one right here, it's called Eulogy. And I'm going to focus that in the same exact area because I'm not too happy with how that first shade came out so I'm gonna see if I can use this one to get the color that I was thinking I would get with the first shade so this one definitely gives me more of what I was looking for so I could have just picked the wrong shade to start because this one doesn't seem to be blending away it seems to stay where I want it to and as pigmented as I want it to be I do know that there's a lot of controversy going around about this palette. A lot of people think it's insensitive, but I really like the concept behind it and I think it's a really nice tribute to the afterlife and how you can honor people and their passing. I don't know. I, I don't think it was in poor taste, but I'm also biased because I'm a Jeffree Star fan, so I probably would think a lot of things he does aren't in poor taste. I always see the art behind his ideas. Yeah, the timing sucked because of the coronavirus, but he's obviously been planning this palette for way before the coronavirus, so I don't think it's that serious. You know? Probably isn't. So to deepen this up even more, I'm going to dip into this shade right here, which is called Solemnly Swear, and I'm going to continue to focus this on the inner and outer corners of my eye to try and deepen them up even more. This color is really pigmented. I really like how its payoff is. I don't think this one will blend away at all. And then to blend that one out, I'm just gonna take the fluffy brush I've been using and work on blending it up and out. So far the only shade that I haven't been a fan of with was the first one, which was Embalmed. It just wasn't pigmented enough to really show up on my lid and stay where I wanted it to. It just would kind of blend away when I would try and buff it into the skin more. But so far, that's the only one that I've had that issue with. So now I need to figure out how dark I want this look to be. I don't know if I technically want to use black or if I just want to use this shade right here, which is Grave Digger to deepen it because I've used this one and then pretty much the only two shades darker than that are going to be Grave Digger and Hearse. But I don't think Grave Digger is really dark enough for what I want this look to be. But I am gonna try that one first before I dip into the black because I'm gonna try and not use the black because I feel like that's what everyone is gonna use because it's really the only color in here that will give you a lot of depth right off the bat. But I wanna see if I can get the depth that I want with the gray colors. I feel that's kind of the point of the palette, to play with the grays and the blending to get things as deep and as blended out as you can without just automatically going for the black. However, if the color doesn't make it as deep as I want it, I will go in with the black, but I'm gonna start with Grave Digger and put this on a very precise crease brush. And I'm gonna focus this one on my inner and outer corners again, just in a smaller area and hope that it'll deepen it up enough I think it will, so that I won't dip into the black. I don't know. It's dark, but it's not too dark, but maybe that's just how I'll keep it anyway. So I'm just setting it down first. I'm just kind of patting it in where I want it. And then I'm gonna take the fluffy brush that I've been using for every color and blend it out. You get the gist, you get the pattern. So the blending of these shadows, I have to say, is honestly amazing but I don't really know if it technically has anything to do with the eyeshadow colors since all of the grays are really close to the same hue. It's making the blending process really, really easy because you don't have to blend it out that much in order to get it to seamlessly blend into the next shade since they're all kind of similar. But I do think that gray was able to give it enough, enough depth for me to not want to go in with the black. I don't know, what do you guys think? Obviously you can't tell me now, but I think that this is as deep as I want it to be for now. Cause I'm, I just want to try and create something a little bit different and unique for you guys. Since I know a lot of people are just going to dive into that black 
to get that instant depth that they want, but I'm gonna try and work around and use the grays to get it. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and take some of my P. Louise base and use that right in the center of my lid to give it a nice clean surface to lay down the shimmer shade that I'm gonna put there. Okay, so I just swatched all of the glitter shades again on my arm so I could figure out which one I want to use. And I think I want to use this one right here, which was Paul Bearer. I want to use this one mainly because all of the other shimmer shades swatched really well on my arm and they all seem to have the same formula, but this one for some reason swatched kind of bad and it has more of a chunky formula. I don't know if he says that it's different or if he claims that they're all the same but i want to try that one out because it was the only one that performed differently in a swatch so i'm going to go ahead and pick it up on a dry brush first and try and place it on the center of my lid oh this is nice okay it performs way better than it did in the swatch but it is still a little patchy and it's not as smooth and buttery as his normal shimmers are I will say but it's definitely buildable and you can get the payoff that you want from it but it's definitely not the same consistency that his normal shimmers are so now I'm gonna take the small crease brush and add no additional product but just blend the gray shade with the shimmer shade so that color is nowhere near as light as I thought it was going to be and I actually think I kind of just ruined the entire look. I don't think that you can see enough dimension in the eye anymore because I think the shimmer shade is kind of the same color if not darker than what I already have. So I am going to go ahead and pick up hers. I'm going to start to work this into the inner and outer corner to deepen up the eye look and blend it into the, the shimmer shade. So I'm still not loving how that shade looks. So I'm going to pick up the same flat brush that I had that shade on and I'm going to dip into Goodbye, this shimmer shade on the end. And I'm going to try and lighten up the center part of the glitter color. So focusing this, I just fucked up the whole look. I'm gonna, let's, let's go with it, let's see. Focus it right there. No, what else, what other color can I take? Maybe this one. Okay, that works. So I picked up Afterlife on the same brush and I'm just sort of dabbing it into the center of my lid to brighten it up because I think the look got a little too dark. So now that I have that, down, I'm going to pick up the big blending brush again to blend the inner corner and the outer corner into the shimmer shade. So I'm okay with how this eye look came out. I don't say, I wouldn't say that I love it. I think my main problem is that I really wanted a halo eye, but none of the shimmer shades were really light enough to give me the halo eye I wanted. So I'm going to leave it like this and I'm going to go ahead and do the other eye off camera and, and probably apply some lashes and then I'll be back to show you guys the underneath part of the eye. Okay, so I haven't finished this eye yet, but I want to come back on because I switched up the look a little bit as I'm sure you can tell in this eye. So what I did was take this shade right here, the lightest shimmer shade called Diamond Ashes, and I went ahead and concealed the inner third of my eye and I placed that color down just because I thought the smoky eye in the inner corner was just making the whole look way way too dark for my comfort so I'm going to go ahead and show you what I did on the other eye so you can see so I'm still taking Paul Bearer which is the shade right here which was the first shimmer shade that I used and I'm going to put that in the center part of my lid again just like last time. I also think this shade would be better used wet because it does not pick up that great on a brush. Also, I'm gonna take this small little teeny brush and pick up the white shimmer shade called Diamond Ashes. It's in the bottom corner right here. And I'm going to put that on the inner third of my eye 
And then just make sure I blend it together with the darker shimmer shade called Paul Bearer. And here is where I pick up the black shade again to blend out my outer corner. And then take a big fluffy brush to blend everything. So for the most part, I have the look exactly how I want it. It's not perfect, but it's what I'm working with because I kind of fucked up the initial eye look. I'm really not loving how this look is coming out, but I am content with what I have right now. So I'm going to do the underneath part of my eyes since I already have you guys here before I apply any lashes or liner or anything. I don't want the underneath part of my eye to be super dark, so I'm going to take the shade right here called Solemnly Swear on a flat brush and stamp this along my waterline. And then I'm going to take the shade right here called Wednesday. I haven't dipped into this one yet. And I'm going to take a small blending brush and use it to blend the darker shade out. So if you don't believe me, that majority of the shades in this palette are the same. I just used a shade I'd never used yet. And I put it on the underneath part of my eye and I think that the outer corner and the underneath part blend and look the exact same and I used a bunch of different colors on the top and used two colors on the bottom one I had never even dipped into before on my lid and I got pretty much the same exact color that I have here here do with that information what you will but a lot of the shades in this palette are extremely extremely similar even if they don't look like it in the pan their payoff is pretty much identical. So to finish up the look, I'm going to dip into the shade Afterlife, and I'm going to use that as my brow bone highlight. And I'm also gonna pop a little bit of it in my inner corner. So now I'm just going to quickly finish the other eye and add some falsies and mascara, and then I'll be right back to show you guys the finished look and give you my final thoughts. So here is the final look that I was able to come up with. I do like how the final look turned out, but now let's just dive right on into my final thoughts of the overall palette. Let's just start off, would I recommend this palette to anybody? No, I would not. I don't think that it's really as great as I thought it was going to be, or even as great as Jeffrey claims. Honestly, all of the gray tones are very, very, very similar that when you build them up upon each other, it doesn't even look like you've placed a different shadow down. I don't really think that you need this many grays at all. I was one of the people who at first when it was released was so excited because I thought you could get these nice gradient looks. However, all of the colors are very similar that it's really hard to get that type of gradient look. It all just kind of meshes together and I have to say I was really, really disappointed. Even the shimmers that look like they're gonna be light, like the one that I tried to use, they're super dark and I just don't think you can do anything else with this palette besides a smoky eye, which is great, but you also don't need a palette for only a smoky eye. So I just am a little bit underwhelmed with the final result of this look. I tried to do something different. I tried to not default to a smoky eye and I just found that I couldn't really do anything else. I didn't like how the look was coming out. Whoops, my eyelash is going crazy. It's going crazy. Ugh, anyway, like I said, I think you could create a smoky eye look with a much more simpler palette. You definitely don't need all of these grays, which kind of sucks. It was an expensive palette and I bought it and I was really, really excited for it. But at the end of the day, I just don't think you can get that many different variations with gray. I haven't seen anybody review this that wasn't on the PR list yet. So I'm really interested to hear what you guys have to say if you think that this is a good palette, if you have it, or if you see what I mean when I was doing my tutorial about how all of the grays are honestly just kind of the same color. All in all, the performance of the shadows are exactly how you would picture them to be. They're just like every other Jeffree Star Cosmetics. They're really, really nice quality. I just don't think the color story works though as well as he says it would or as well as I thought it was going to. I'm not really happy with how the final look came out. I think it's pretty basic and I could have gotten this with a different palette that has grays and black in it, not specifically an almost $70 palette with shipping and everything included. So now let's get into the part of the video that everybody cares the most about that I'm sure half of you just skipped to the end anyway. But for the giveaway, I'm going to have it set to be open for two weeks, but I might have to extend it if I don't get the other palette in time. 
If you want to enter the giveaway, the first thing you need to do is make sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel and you follow me on Instagram. My Instagram handle will be in the description box below. And then you just have to go ahead and leave a comment on this video and give it a thumbs up. And in the comment, you need to tell me something about the palette or about the video, about what you like about it, what you don't like about it. And just make sure that you also leave your Instagram handle so that I can contact you. And in two weeks, I'll randomly pick a comment and that will be the winner. I'll message them on Instagram. They'll have 12 hours to respond. If they don't respond, I'll pick somebody up. Like I said, I'm gonna have it set open for two weeks, but if I don't get the other palette before then, I'll obviously just keep extending the deadline until the other palette gets here. So with all that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I don't have anything else for you guys this time. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye.